Hello, Kerbalots, and welcome to Minor Man and More Part 16, Groundhog Day. Ah, well, we'll get into that soon, but at the moment, I'm launching a satellite. If you watched, now, what was it 15, 14, 13? I can't remember which version it was. I created this satellite by here, and I sent it on the way to scan Minmus. The only problem is I put the wrong tool on it for scanning for anomalies and all other stuff. So I put the uh, anomaly scanner on there. It also scans for other things, which uh, skip my mind at the moment. But anyway, let's get this into orbit. We can get this on the way to the man. We can scan for anomalies and whatnot and everything else, which is cool. Now, going on from the comments from last episode, people said yes to space news and KSP news and stuff. So while I get this into orbit and furl all the the uh, solar panels, and I try to plot our way to Minmus. However, you can see I'm trying to change the inclination because the best way to get a probe into orbit, for a scanning probe, is in a polar region. That means the planet rotates under you as you're scanning, so you scan well virtually all the area as long as your orbit is not the same as that of the orbit of the planet or moon. So orbit height is important in scanning a body of any kind. Anyway, let's get this on the way to Minmas. Uh, slightly over Burma there, so turn around. Yeah, I'll burn the other way. Okay, well, that's good enough height. And what I'll do with that is I'll set an inclination burn while we're on the way to the Mun. Okay, but now I have to think about capturing that asteroid. No, this is not the asteroid mark. No, we have to go back to mine our mining base on the Mun. We can't neglect it. This is Mining the Mun series after all. Okay, so what I'm building by here is a refinery with ore tanks. It's got a fuel tank on there. And I found something odd. With those engines plugged on the side of the ore tanks and not the fuel tank, they still work. I tested this. This has quite a bit of delta V from that one tank and those four engines. And I have tested it, so it works great. Okay, let's get these. I've oh got a solar gigantic solar panels to make sure we have enough energy for mining. I've also, don't forget to put those thermal panels on there because you need to dissipate the heat. Apparently, they gen. I'm not entirely sure. Do the refineries call generate heat? Anyway, they're handy to have on there. And also, I'm using the Kerbal Attachment System mod here. Attach the nozzle pipes there. I'll send some nozzle pipes in in containers or something on another mission. That way the Kerbals can attach the ore miners directly to the ore refinery, transfer the ore and hey presto, we can do the ore transfer stuff and everything else. Like refining that ore so we can make some money on the mine. Okay, now we've added the 180 ton launcher that I've built in a old episode and we can go and launch this up. Now please note if I do put this up for an upload file this 180 ton launcher is quite unstable especially when you've got a large load like that on top. So keep you on your toes and make sure you're prone to prograde and everything should be funky dory so don't blame me if you crash. Anyway this goes to the box we get into orbit we plan a transfer burn to the man, this time for an equatorial orbit around the man, because we want to land this on the same site that we have the minor uh, rover that we've launched in pre last two episodes ago, I think. So with our setup, we accidentally burn too much on this one again, so we have to reverse and burn back, and you'll see the development here, why I called it Groundhog Day, but that's not really why I called it Groundhog Day. Okay, so now where am I building? Well, I agreed with you guys that we're going to make a base on an asteroid, and first off we have to capture one. Now the last asteroid, well, we lost it. It wasn't working, so Islina, the pilot, decided to put charges on the asteroid for safety reasons and detonated the asteroid. Therefore, it becomes a non-hazardous waste, which is produced a dust cloud, which is now circling curving. I'm sure that cannot be good. Anyway, the clouds look... The, the atmosphere outside the window over there looks clear. 
but I decided we're still going to get an asteroid. This time I'm not going to get one which is going to impact Caribbean. I'm going to get one which is going to pass high over Caribbean. And as you can see by here, I've added the claws on four of these boosters. And the plan is I'll boost these onto the asteroid. There's probes on each one so I can control them individually. Each one will target the center mass. They'll all be at slight angles. And well, then you can control the asteroid in that way. And by there, you just saw me put strut connectors on the ash on the all the engines of the asteroid pusher because we'll attach strut connectors onto the asteroid. We'll connect struts to between the two with the Kerbal attachment system and Kerbal inventory system. That way, they're not wobbling about as they're pushing the asteroid, and we should not lose control. Now, this is not going to be the only one I'm going to send up. I'm going to send a couple of these up into orbit, the same as the asteroid when we find one. And then we'll have multiple asteroid engines, because I don't think this will be enough to push a large asteroid. And also by here, I'm attaching the Place Anywhere RCS dock the thrusters, because I want to be able to move this asteroid with ease. So if I spam them everywhere, Everything should work. Anyway, let's get one of these into orbit. Okay, let's go target our asteroid. Now, where is it? I did pretty... Okay, this is the asteroid. And it's not a class E, unfortunately. It's a class D asteroid. But if you look at this orbit, it's almost circular. Or almost in an orbit around Kirby. All we have to do is capture that, reduce its orbit slightly, its speed slightly, and it should be in a high orbit around Kirby. That will give us enough time to go up, capture it, um, well, place more engines on it, and perhaps bring it down lower orbit. It'll give us time. Okay, now what I'm doing by here, I'm aligning the launch, the launcher with the orbit <coughs> of the asteroid, excuse me, I'm coughing here, and the orbit on, on the equator of the Kirby. And basically, you have two launch windows. However, we're interrupted by here. How dare you? Yeah, I set up the alarm clock. I've used the alarm clock mod to set up for maneuvers. And we have to do a correction maneuver for the Manprober scanner thingy. And I forgot what I named it now. I think I called it Manscope. And that stands for Man Scanner Orbiter Probe. I used this website to put a load of words in and it gives you the letters to use from those words to make a name for a spacecraft. And Scope was the best one I could come up with. If you have better names or weird names perhaps for our devices or probes, spacecraft or bases, let me know. Okay, now you can see I've set up a maneuver here to get us into a polar orbit but we have the engines to get up and you can see the launch doesn't go well no abort 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 okay so what we're we gonna do by here I've decided that there's some lethal radiation stuff on this probe so I'm going to push it out and this disband it in the ocean because we don't want it landing on any land anywhere killing the kerbals causing kerbals to glow green even though they are green. Ah, well. Okay, a bit of fresh wood down to the ground or to the ocean so it can destroy itself in safety. And there you go. Okay, all right. Those probe cores seem to be a bit hard to survive. Oh, okay, they're not surviving. Ah, well, I'm searching around now for things that survived. The grabber arms have survived. What? What's going on? No, no, Danny246 thing, whatever his name is, has been at my planet. He's destroyed it. Ah, oh, what the hell has happened? I don't know, but a quick revert in the flight. Let's see if we can do this properly. I think at this point, I went back to the VAB. I did some winglets to this rocket to help with control, because I think that was the problem. Okay, handy tip right here. You can see the marker for the opposite marker for the object we've targeted. And what we want to do is get in close orbit to that. 
So that's what I'm doing by here. I'm trying to get the orbit as close as possible to that of the asteroid that we're going to target. Now this can be a bit tricky, however do not threat. Because what you can do is get as close as you can, set up the maneuvers, the maneuver node for getting its orbit, and then use the inclination change, the radial, on that orbit, on the orbit markers, to get yourself as close as possible to the orbit of the asteroid. Now I'll probably show you that in a bit, because I'm going to give you the full launch of this one, or full lunch as someone requested. And now I suppose I can talk a bit about space news. Dun 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 dun. Space news. Okay, so what have we got? Let me bring up my notes. Now, if you want more detailed information on space news, I'm going to do this more on engineer just talking. Where I'm just going to go over the basics. Now, I found out over this last weekend or that the Japanese have a space mission. And what the hell is that space mission? They actually sent a probe to a, an asteroid, like we're doing by here. <laughs> but their spacecraft is gonna get a sample from the asteroid. And what they're gonna do with that sample is bring it back to Earth. Now, what was interesting with this space probe is it's got four landers on it, like Philippe that landed on the comet that looks like a rubber duck they're going to land four landers and these landers are going to be able to hop around on the surface of the asteroid so not i'm not sure if the asteroid that they target has a higher mass which means they have high gravity which they can use to hop around without the possibility of losing their footing and flying away from the asteroid the name of the space probe is hayabas busa 2 <laughs> if I read that right. And they've named the asteroid Ryugu. And Ryugu is actually a mythical undersea dragon's palace. And they've named it that because uh, fishman Urashima Taro, which was a fisherman from folklore, went into the, Jap into the underwater castle of the dragon and found a treasure box and brought it back. And that is what this mission is gonna do. It's gonna get some samples of that asteroid. It's gonna bring it back to Earth and that's the treasure box. A lot can we learn from that. As you see by here, I'm using the inclination, the inclination nodes to find out the ascending and descending nodes to find out the angle and trying to reduce it as we're launching up now. And hopefully we can get that down to zero. Yeah, you can see we've virtually lost it. I'm gonna straighten up our orbit. Don't worry too much if you're not 100% at zero because you can correct that when you're up in orbit. Or even when you're going for the burn to the asteroid for your intercept. Also, in other space news, the CubeSat launch was successful on the Atlas V rocket. So yay, okay, so apparently there were about 13 CubeSats on there, some funded by NASA and some by, funded by the National Reconnaissance Office, I think, or if I'm correct, reading that correctly, I assume the National Reconnaissance Office are for more reconnaissance stuff. And what the hell has happened to my space probe here? You can see some of the fairings have lodged in between some of the rockets. So I wanted to get away those fairings away and sort of let them burn up in the atmosphere. I know that this game, they once you've jettisoned them, they disappear after you move away from them at a fair distance. But what the hell. Okay, hopefully we can shake that loose once we get into orbit. But I don't like the shaking. It, it worries me. Anyway, those, long, those satellite where the CubeSats were launched into orbit on the Atlas V on the 8th, which was from the time of recording yesterday. From the time this is up, it was probably two days or three days ago, depending on how long it takes to render. Because sometimes I have problems with the program, Sony Vegas crashing, so, uh, well, uh, what are you gonna do? 
Anyway, that is enough for space news for the time being. What have we got for DevNote news? While well, I'm trying to spin this rocket to get it all up. Well, there is some good news and some bad news. The bad news is 1.1 is not coming out anytime soon. The good news is they decided to release 1.0.5 with contextual contracts, which means if you capture an asteroid, it may ask you to build a base on that asteroid. So it's tailored to your game. And they've improved things like cockpits and thermal dynamics of parts and things like that. All the dev notes will be more detailed in my An Engineer Just Talking episode 2. Well, I'll get to that later in next week. However, we've got problems here. We've still got the fairing stuck in here, and my orbit has disappeared. Where the hell has it gone? <laughs> what the hell has happened here? And obviously, things have gone wrong, so I go back to the KFC, and there's a space probe on the launch pad. What the hell can be happening here? Now I'm thinking that perhaps it's duplicated it. Leave a like if you want to like this video and subscribe for more. But no! I just launched that probe. Why, game? Why? Anyway, I'm Orpater. I'm going to engineer the crap out of this. Reference from the Martian. <laughs>